once we're introduced to open intelligence and we begin to rely on the four mainstays, we really come into a different relationship with all of our data. And we see this great shift that occurs from really honing in on the, these descriptive labels and living a life where we are reactive to the descriptions to being able to really choose something different rather than avoiding and indulging and replacing all of the data as a matter of course, here we're introduced to short moments repeated many times until continuous as the pith instruction. To really test in our own direct experience, well, what happens when I choose to deeply relax in the flow of all of the moment to moment experiences rather than relying on this contrived reaction to really a falsified understanding of what the data really is. And so we have our own circumstantial flow of data as the great testing ground for how it feels to be empowered with this knowledge of open intelligence. And so for each one of us, we, we have our, our pet set of data, whether it's self-pity, whether it's insecurity, whether it's anger, whether it's focus on the body, whatever it might be, as, as all of this was brought up today. And so for each one of us, this is our choice point. What happens in the moment when this data of, say, anger arises? And when we feel the anger, that that energy starting to bubble up, and most of us can, can feel this. We, we just have this great energetic force bubbling up. What happens if we just take a moment to rest, to relax, to really understand deeply in our own direct experience what exactly is this energy that I'm feeling? What happens if rather than going to the default of, oh, this is anger, we choose to recognize that this is our beneficial potency of open intelligence. That in a short moment, we recognize, wow, this energy that's arising at this moment is inseparable from my own open intelligence. That whatever I have chosen in the past to define as anger or self-pity or insecurity or self-worthlessness, but this is actually my own energy of open intelligence. And you see in that moment, in that short moment of resting deeply in the flow, whatever that reified description was is completely outshone. That's the power of a short moment. Poof. We see in that short moment that there is nothing but this incredible energy of open intelligence that the data and the open intelligence are completely inseparable. Just like the color blue and the sky are completely inseparable. Wetness and water, heat and fire, completely inseparable. In fact, the data is how we know open intelligence. And open intelligence is what spawns the data so that we can recognize open intelligence. Now you see, this is just a completely different view of our everyday experience. And we really need to train that up. We need to get used to this view and we need to trust in the power of our own intelligence. And so for many people, it's easier to become familiar with open intelligence with positive or neutral types of situations when we're feeling pretty good about things, we can test how does it feel to relax in this situation? And we can sort of build up our, our confidence in the ever presence of open intelligence, in this evenness and this equalness, in really understanding what is the true nature of the data. It's similar to any other new skill that you might want to become familiar with. 
you wouldn't say if you were learning to ski, you wouldn't want to go to the top of the mountain to the hardest ski trail and try to ski that trail. You would probably start on a really small slope, the bunny slopes, and you would take short moments of gaining confidence of being up on those skis. And then you take more short moments as you try to go down a, a slightly larger hill until at some point you're so confident and things are coming so naturally that you end up at the top of the mountain and can easily ski down. So you see, this is how it is with short moments. For, for some people, it's best to practice with the positive or the neutral. For other people, the, the most intense afflictive data serve to, to be uh, the perfect training ground for short moments. So you see, it just is the way it is for each one of us. There's really no set way to gain confidence and in open intelligence other than to keep the focus on the four mainstays. So we, we, we choose over and over and over again, short moments repeated many times until continuous. And then we rely on the trainer, somebody who is there for us 24 seven, empowering our own understanding and knowledge and recognition of open intelligence. And then we have all of the incredible training material everything on the website, all of the incredible talks, the videos, the books, and then all the formal training settings that, that we can enter into. All of this just to empower the instinctive recognition of open intelligence. Everything that we offer, always on point, the arrow directly hitting the bullseye, empowering open intelligence over and over and over again. And then we have each other. We have the community, people all over the world who are choosing this new lifestyle, choosing to rely on the four mainstays as a matter of course. And so you see the combinatory power of these four short moments, the trainer, the training in the community, it guarantees that we will become more and more reliant on open intelligence as the fundament to our everyday life. So in some ways, it's really good when you have these afflictive data streams flowing. First and foremost, you probably have sensed that your old way of, of reactivity to the data feels worse and worse and worse. <laughs> so that's a really good sign. That, that is already open intelligence empowering your discernment. So I think that's, that's actually quite good we know immediately that there's a different way to be and we want to train up that different way. And then we just, we, we can come to meetings like this and we bring up our direct experience and we see, wow, you know, th this is a very similar experience to all, all people. Because everything that's occurring is just the shine of open intelligence, the singular unified intelligence shining forth as the data. That's all that's really going on. And I think that it's really good just to check in with yourselves, no matter how long you've been involved. Just, just, take, just take a moment and check in and, and see, do, do I feel more easeful in my everyday life? Do I see greater and greater benefits accruing from my choice to rely on the four mainstays? Do I see that what once was so prevalent and predominant in my life, this emotional reactivity or, or this, this distraction from whatever the, the data might be, the anger, the insecurity, the self-pity, is this lessening? Am I less and less distracted by these reified descriptions? And, and I, I'm sure that the answer is yes to all of those. And so this is where we really want to keep our focus because this is what's going to increase more and more over over your lifetime, the increased benefit, the increase in, in just an easeful flow to your everyday life, increase in a compassion and understanding for yourself and other people, increase in just a general life satisfaction and flourishing, increase in ultimate discernment, 
increase in skillfulness in every situation where we just feel so stable and 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 stable in this in this knowingness of of inseparability stable in our direct experience of the power of outshining open intelligence outshining these reified descriptions and so just like like i said earlier with every new skill there there's a a training up period so to speak and we just remain gentle with ourselves and and patient with ourselves and we rely on the four mainstays and and that's that's all that we need to do open intelligence it's it's self optimizing in a sense it empowers itself with its own recognition so you see we already have the the tools we already have the pith instruction for its recognition so now we can just simply relax relax in our great choice to really understand reality just as it is.